So I want to share with you what I call the kingdom keys for success. We are about to go through some crisis in this country and every country. Some of you will lose your job. Some of your business will collapse. Some of you will have downsizing and right sizing. Some of you will have problems trying to keep your house. And some of you are going to actually lose your capacity to generate income. And I've, I've been sent here by God, perhaps just among the other leaders, to tell you, look, if you're going to make it through the crisis, you have to focus on management. Here's God's successful key. Genesis 1.28 says these words, And the Lord blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that creeps upon the ground. Now, listen carefully because this is really the heart of God's mandate. In Genesis 126, God says these words about you. Let them have dominion over the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, God tells us how to do it. Dominion means to govern, to rule, to control, to manage, to lead. Now in verse 28, he tells us how to dominate the earth. He gives us the process. Please get your pen. You're going to write this down because anyone who wants to dominate in the earth will have to follow God's simple process. First of all, the four keys of principles of success in God's program. Number one, be fruitful. God never said to be seedful. The first command God gave man was to be what? Fruitful. It's impossible to, be, to produce fruit unless it was preceded by seed. God will never demand what doesn't exist already. So God's first command is to be fruitful. Now when I looked at the word fruitful in the original Hebrew, it does not mean to have children. It shocked me. For example, if having children was the essence of God's command, then Abraham didn't do a good job with just one legitimate child. The word fruitful, write it down, it means productive. Be productive. God's first command to humans is be productive. That means produce something. Poverty is the absence of self-production. I remember uh, oof, when Jesus was laying on the floor one day eating, a woman walked in. She was, it was illegal for her to do that, where men were eating at that time, and she stepped over. Peter, James, and John, and she came to him and she took this beautiful stone bottle and she break the top and she poured this ointment over his body and she began to rub it into his flesh and into his feet and the scent filled the room and right away the men knew this scent indicates a quality of ointment that was very expensive. Matter of fact, it was imported from Egypt. They knew it. It was used for embalming bodies. It cost twelve to thirteen thousand dollars US in our day. That's why they said this is a year's wages in one bottle. And they complained to him and said, Sir, why do you let this woman waste this precious money on your body? And Jesus said something very important. They said it could have been given to the poor. His answer was the poor you always have with you. Now, when I look at the word poor there, it shocked me. It doesn't mean those who lack. It means non-productive ones. The first command of God is produce. Poverty is when you stop producing. And by the way, stay with me here. God said to Adam, be fruitful. 
God never gave Adam a chair or a table. He hid them in the trees. God never gave man shoes. He hid them in the cows. God never built a building before. He hid the buildings in the dirt, in the concrete. He hid the cars and the ore in the mountains. Be fruitful. Be productive. The future of Australia is not in America or England. It's in Australia. The capacity to produce is right here. Poverty is a lack of creativity, not a lack of resources. There is no crisis except a crisis of creativity. No money has left the planet. No matter what they say around the world, no money went to the moon, no money went to Mars, it's all still here. And it will be attracted to creativity because crisis creates creativity and innovation. It is those who are productive that will attract resources. is multiply. Multiply means to reproduce what you produced. If you follow any successful company, you know, I was driving here a moment ago and I just saw McDonald's. And McDonald's uh, is far away from its original headquarters in, uh, o in Orlando. And uh, it's amazing, when you go to McDonald's in any part of the world, it's the same burger. McDonald's has discovered God's program more effectively than the church. First of all, you what? Produce. Everybody say produce. produce. In other words, you produce something. You produce one good item. McDonald's produced a product called Big Mac. You cannot find a Mac anywhere else. That's their fruit. But having a good product you will still die of starvation. A good idea doesn't make you wealthy or successful. You got to be able to move to stage number two. Multiply. Reproduce it. McDonald's have developed a system that can produce one billion burgers every single month. And it's the same Big Mac. In China, in Ukraine, in Mexico, it's the same burger. In the Bahamas, in Jamaica, in Trinidad, in London, it's the same burger. Why? They have learned to move God's second stage. They produce and then they reproduce. Every successful business on earth has stolen God's process and only the church have missed it. That's why we're broke. Microsoft, Bill Gates produced one good fruit. And then he put the system in to multiply it. What you cannot reproduce will die. The third ex command of God is very important. He said replenish. Hey boy, said replenish. The word replenish means to distribute. You know, it's incredible God's ideas are all business ideas. Why? You are a manager. No matter how good your product is, and no matter how many times you reproduce it, nothing can destroy a company faster than dead inventory. Come on, businessman, talk to me. You can have the best product in the world in the warehouse and still die of starvation. You must move to the third level of success, and that is distribution. This church was not built by God just to become a good product. He wants to reproduce this a thousand times in the city. And then he wants to distribute it to other nations of the world. Any company anywhere in the world who are successful have followed God's program. The fourth level of God's success management program is, he said, subdue. Subdue means to control the market. 
You know, McDonald's have no interest in competition. They are after domination. <laughs> if you are in business and you don't have a plan to dominate the market, get out of the business. Bill Gates is the wealthiest man in the world today because he was the most successful human so far in our generation who successfully followed God's program. He produced a fruit, he reproduced it, and then he distributed it in every computer and he was so successful that the entire government was threatened in the United States. He began to dominate the entire computer market. So they called him into Congress, sat him down and said, you can't do this. You're too successful. You can't control every computer in the world. His success made him a threat. What are you doing with your gift? That's why I'm here today. You were born with a gift. Oh, I need two more sessions for this. This is too important. Listen to me. Your life is a packaged seed bag. Subdue, control. And God says, if you follow these four principles, be fruitful, produce your gift, your product, multiply, reproduce it, replenish, distribute it, subdue, control the market, the result will be dominion. Dominion, therefore, is not a pursuit, it's a result. 